everybody, Little Gamer here, and welcome to a brand new video. I am so glad you have decided to join me to get to get today. Oh dear, I seem to be stumbling over my words already, so this will be a fun video. Today we will be making the Bolton family. Now, I decided I wanted to make this family because typically I just make couples or, you know, large families with either mom and dad or mom and mom or mom and mom and mom or dad and dad and dad. I, I, and there's an endless amount of families that I have made. Um, I've made single mothers, single fathers, um... I haven't quite made single parents yet. Uh, a parent or a someone who is who identifies as like gender fluid or non-binary who has a child. I I haven't made them one of those yet. I might. I just I want to do more research on the non-binary and gender fluid community before I create any of those individuals. Therefore. I can give them the most respect and best representation that I can. But let's go ahead and dive on in to the backstory of the Bolton family. The Bolton family is made up of Jasmine, Evelyn, and their adorable American bulldog named Doug. Yes, the dog is named Doug. <laughs> if you get the reference, I love you. But, the ja Jasmine Bolton is a journalist. She has worked as a journalist for over three years and has quickly risen to the tops, well, upper, upper levels of her career. She is well known and well respected within her immuni immunity, community in San Myshuno, and she is very well known in journalism and news outlets and reports. If there is something fishy going on, you can bet your bottom dollar that she's going to cover it. Now, Jasmine, while she is also highly respected, she has many friends, and she is used to going out on the town occasionally. Not like every day. She was not a party girl. Never has been, never will be. But she'd go to, you know, dinner parties, the occasional get-together of old high school buddies, She'd also go to the occasional nightclub or bar for, you know, a drink and maybe just to let loose a little bit. She didn't do this often, as she found no point in it. And while, yes, it's fun to go and relieve some stress and let loose and be surrounded by crowds of people and just dance and everything, she also enjoyed her quiet and at, and being able to go home and escape from her busy day. She had many friends, of course, she still does, and she would visit them quite often, at least once or twice a week. Sometimes she'd visit a friend a day, if it had been a while, and she had the time. But all of that had to be put to the side when her parents died. Both her mother and father passed because of a horrible and tragic pool accident. For some reason, a wall surrounded the entirety of the pool suddenly. No one knew where it came from or how it was built so quickly. I mean, yes, homes were just absolutely appear out of nowhere, but very rarely did walls just appear around pools. And her parents drowned tragically, leaving behind her 16-year-old younger sister, Evelyn, and the family dog, Doug, who is about a four-year-old American bulldog, and he's absolutely precious. Um, now, Jasmine, of course, was 
horrified and wounded deeply at the loss of her parents. But she was an adult when this happened, and it's not uncommon for people in their 20s and 30s and 40s to lose their parents to things like old age or disease or even tragic accidents. It's, it's not uncommon for an adult to lose their parents. However, it is very uncommon for a teenager or child in this case, well, she is a teenager, but for a minor to lose their parents so suddenly. It's typically expected to happen when children are in adulthood. It happening when children are in their, in, well, in their minority, it's, it's rarely seen in, in this world. So, Jasmine knew that while she was grieving her parents, she knew that her younger sister would be grieving, but in a completely different way than she was. Jasmine knew that at one point her parents would pass, so she was sort of prepared for this, whereas her younger sister was, well, woefully unprepared. She At 16, you don't expect to lose your parents. You assume they'll live forever. I mean, of course you know it's possible that they'll pass, but when you're at such a young age, you don't really expect it to happen. And for it to happen, it's just its so tragic and so traumatizing for the poor thing. So Jasmine, being the only adult that um, could take in her younger sister and was financially responsible enough and had the finances to do so as well, she obviously took in her younger sister and is now trying her best to raise her and instill the belief systems that their parents had. Or, well, of course she's changing some things from what her parents did. She's a lot less strict in many matters, but... That's because she grew up, and she understands what it's like to be on the strict side of, of the, uh, well, on the other side of the strict parent. So she's a little more relaxed than her parents were, but she's still pretty firm with her younger sister. Now, of course, this means that Jasmine has had to cut down on the amount of, you know, outings and things she usually did for fun. She mostly goes... Her mo well, her daily routine is typically work and then home. Instead, as opposed to once a week of going to a bar or a nightclub or hanging with a friend, it's now turned down to maybe once every three or four weeks where she goes to one. Now, this isn't because her younger sister is completely incapable of tending to herself. Her younger sister is perfectly capable of tending to herself. But Jasmine knows that after such a horrendous loss, after having to not only lose your parents, but leaving the home you grew up in, leaving the school and friends you've known your whole life, leaving the community and area you grew up in is going to be very traumatic for her younger sister. And as such, Jasmine is doing her best to be there, to be home, to be around should her younger sister need her. And <sighs> some may think this is a bit of a suffocating approach, but Jasmine loves her younger sister and doesn't want her younger sister feeling like she's a burden or that she's just in Jasmine's way. She doesn't want her younger sister to feel that way. And she wants her younger sister to know that she has a support system, even if it is only one person and a handful of doctors and psychiatrists and therapists, but that she does have one, even if it is just a bit, even if it is a bit small, she still has one at least. And that she's there for her. 
Of course, shortly after the passing of her parents, Jasmine had to take care of all the funeral preparations and everything, and for the most part, she has not had the time to mourn her parents. Now, this is a very depressing thing, as it's one thing to lose a parent, but be unable to mourn them simply because you don't have the time, simply because you have responsibility abilities to tend to and take care of is just, it's awful. Everyone deserves to grieve in their way, and to not be able to is very difficult. But Jasmine has signed both herself and her younger sister up for weekly therapy sessions. Every Friday afternoon, they go to the therapist they talk about their feelings, they open dialogues of communication. Jasmine has opened this line of communication for both herself and her sister to ensure that while, yes, they're both struggling and horribly and deeply miss their family and their dearly departed parents, they'll be able to get through this. They'll be able to communicate that her youngest sister's needs, at the very least, will be met. Both her emotional and, you know, food and clothing and shelter-wise needs. Because everyone assumes that teenagers don't need a lot of emotional support in their day-to-day -day life, even after tragedies. Maybe for a year, but then people are like, why aren't you over it? Jasmine understands, being the older sister and adult, that it's difficult being a teenager, and you need a lot of support when you're a teenager because she herself was once a teenager, so she knows exactly how it feels. So Jasmine has opened that dialogue of communication for her dear sister, and she is actually pretty lax, and because of this effort because of her working so hard to open these com lines of communication between her and her sister, because she works so hard to ensure that her sister, one, has every need met, and maybe even has a few wants and wishes met, she also is able to be there for her sister in a way that many others will not be able to be. And it has actually helped Evelyn greatly with the healing and mourning and grieving processes. And it has also helped Evelyn greatly to know that her older sister is there advocating for her, listening to her, willing to compromise on things, willing to learn about things that struggle, that, that she struggles with. The fact that she is someone who listens, and not just hears, not just says, aha, uh -huh, I'm listening, but genuinely listens, it helps Evelyn greatly. Now, you will meet Evelyn here shortly. Here she is. She's a beautiful girl, as you can all see. Um, you will see that I struggle to choose a hair color and hairstyle. That is what most of her time that I spent on her was for. It was for her hair. <laughs> but I, I think that with teenagers, and as I have recently just been a teenager very recently, I understand how it feels. And the need of self-expression, of change of some form of control in your life when you feel like you have no control, it's needed. And I wanted to show that with the way she dressed, with the way her hair was colored, which is why I was very picky and why I took my time with her creation. Now, back of course to the storyline that I have given them. But yes, let's get back to the story at hand. As I have stated over and over for the past, I don't know, 15 minutes, I have told you what Jasmine has done to ensure that her sister has gotten the proper help and care. Now, while yes, we're on Evelyn, there's still a lot about Jasmine that I must say before we move on to Evelyn herself, though there's not much more, I promise. 
with Jasmine, she has had to obviously given up a lot, um, a lot of things that she would do for fun and stuff like that. Um, with with her sister, she has obviously done everything she can. She's also recently joined the PTA of her sister's newest school, so she's constantly there. And to show an example of how relaxed and fair um, Jasmine can be with her sister when it comes to raising her for the last few years of her minor, her minority, um, she, she, not only does she speak with Evelyn, but if she sees that Evelyn is having a hard morning, or if it does, if it seems like Evelyn is just struggling that day, Jasmine will just completely allow Evelyn to stay home from school. Now, of course, she's not like, okay, you're having a bad day every day. If she's having a rough week, she'll pick her up if she doesn't have anything to do, but for the most part, she's got to stay long enough to get her credit for being there, so, you know, the state's not like, your kid's not at school, this is a truancy issue, blah, 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 which, trust me, I've been there, done that, dealt with that, I'm chronically ill, so I missed a lot of school, and until high school, uh, my, the amount of times my parents were sent to truancy court because I was sick was horrifying, I had a doctor's note, but this is, <laughs> this isn't about me, this is about Jasmine, but, she does allow Evelyn every now and again, if she can tell that her sister is just having an honestly a bad morning or a rough start, she'll let Evelyn stay home. She'll be like, you want to go get ice cream? You want to stay home and sleep? You, you, you don't want to go anywhere? You're having a bad morning? Okay, that's fine. You want to stay home? You can. It's up to you, hun. Now, the only time that she won't be like, hey, I know you're having a rough morning, but you have to go anyway, is if Evelyn has like something like an exam that can't be um, tended to afterwards. Uh, but yes, with that, that, that is how lax Jasmine is. And honestly, I think she's a very lovely sister. Now we are going to move on to Evelyn, the girl we are currently working on on in front of you. Isn't she just absolutely adorable? I love her. Now, I tried... I know as a teenager, I myself probably didn't dress as sophisticated as an adult woman would, but I did have a bit of a more adult taste in my clothing. I didn't like a lot of immature things or gaudy, uh, outfits and stuff. Um, of course, I was really into Lolita fashion and pastel goth fashion and a lot of subcultures, and I would have loved to dress to the nines and all that, but I live in Alabama, and I am not rich, and I cannot afford any of that, and I cannot sew. So for the most part, I would wear my grandmother's clothing, her sweaters and some pants, um, I didn't like wearing the school uniforms at all, especially the, mostly because of the textures. And I was told that I had a pretty elegant style by many of the adults around me. And so I tried to take that experience and put it with Evelyn, but also show that she's still immature a bit, um, that she's looking for ways to con have control in her life, because when you're a teenager who's just recently, literally, just lost about everything you've ever known, there becomes a feeling that you completely and utterly lack all control in your life, and it is an awful thing. And so you look, sometimes not on pur most times not on purpose, actually, but you look for any way that you can have control over your life, even if it's something as minor as choosing what to wear or clothing choices. Because of this, I wanted to implement that into Evelyn's outfits and her looks and her behavior and her traits. I cannot remember her traits off the top of my head. I am sure that they will come up later um, in the recording if 
if I did, if not, I'll probably list them in the comments below, but let's be honest, I probably won't remember. I wanted to add that in. I also wanted to give both girls a sort of color theme. I wanted Evelyn to go for more blue tones, more not not necessarily bright tones, but something that showed her youth, but also her attempt of being more adult. And I really wanted to use these socks. I think they're cute, but they just they didn't work. If if I just had some, as we were always begging for, if I just had some plain swatches. I probably would have done better with this, but I wanted Evelyn to still have that attempt of looking more adult than she is, but also give her the look of someone who is young and trying too hard at being something she's not, and at being in control of things. And I think that was really shown in her outfits. Even with her hair, for example, her hair color. A lot of kids, especially myself, and I remember in my, I think I was 14, I just, I didn't feel like I had any control. All the decisions were made by the older adults. I was only occasionally asked my opinion for it. And so I looked in every way for some form of control, and a lot of that control came from how I dressed, how my hair looked, how, what color my hair was, and that is why I decided to give Evelyn blue hair. I like to think that she decorates her hair with a light blue hair chalk every morning that she goes to school but that her hair, her base hair color, um, that she dyed it as a deep blue, and I tried to make that as obvious as I could. Now, towards the end, you'll see me get a little lazy, because I had been working on this one family for over an hour, for at least an hour in real time, and I was, I was tired. <laughs> I wanted to get it done. So you're going to see me add some pre-chosen outfits. But you will notice that I tried to keep that theme that I had. Um, and, but for a more obvious note though, Evelyn has begun to adjust to her new school, to her new life, and through her hair and her fashion, she has found control. Through the communication she has with her sister, she has found control, and she's beginning to thrive. Now, it is a slow process. It's gonna, it's gonna be a bit. She literally just lost her parents, not even like two months ago, at the point that I'm creating her in. And she is, she's slowly beginning to thrive, and she's happy about that. And so is her sister. She even has made a couple of new friends. Yes, it's just a couple, but it's a start. And honestly, I cannot wait to see how you all play with her, what life you give her, what friends you give her, whether she gets a happy ending or whether the trauma of losing her parents at such a young age kicks in and stunts her life, makes her life more difficult. I cannot wait to hear how all of you play with these people and, well, play with these sims, play with this family. and. If there is any certain way you play with them, I would love to know it. Send me it. I've got a Twitter. <laughs> um, or you could just tell me in the comments. I read them all day, every day. <laughs> every time I upload, I read them like crazy. But yes, this, this, tell me. What happens is completely up to you guys. I like to give them a happy ending because I'm an optimist. 
but tell me what ending you give them. Because the story at the end is completely up to you. And now I shall get to the end and show you the book. And these are our looks. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I am sorry for my rambling and rush at the end. I am so happy you have decided to join me today, and if you liked the video, please let me know. Leave a like, maybe even subscribe, um, comment, share with your friends. I'm a very small channel, and I would love to reach more people. I try my best, but I myself am chronically ill, so sometimes it takes me a while to make videos. But I do, do honestly hope that you enjoyed this video video and I am sorry for the mic moving. I'm just, I'm so tired now. <laughs> I've been talking forever uh, trying to record and edit this video for like hours now. So yes, anyway, I hope you all have a good day and I hope 2022 and the new year treats you and your familia very well. I hope to see you again soon. So bye-bye.